Okay, just a quick video on Bella says hi and she says we're going to do a quick video on an update on the Edward Leeds Fallon timeline. Here's what we have so far. eighteen eighty seven August tenth says here Edward Leeds Scotland is born in San Marina, Latvia. Down here it says Ed was born january twelfth, eighteen eighty seven. His mother's name and her birth date date of death nineteen twenty three. And that comes into play. 1910-1911, Ed leaves Latvia after a disastrous wedding. Interestingly, Mr. Moser comes to Miami because of an illness. May of 1910. 1912, March 23rd, Ed leaves Hamburg, Germany on the SS Pennsylvania apparently that ship there April 6th Ed arrives in New York Ed enters into the States Reuben Moser settles into Florida City 1912 1915 Ed writes his last letter to his girlfriend, whom he was to be married to. This is also the last year Ed receives letters from his homeland. 1916, January 6, Douglas County, Oregon Deed Index reports that Ed purchased some land in Elkton, Elkton Oregon from an S.P. Fenway. 1917, it is shown that Ed is living in Elkton, Elkton, Oregon. He is listed himself as an axe handle manufacturer. Single. 1918, Ed meets Mr. Moser. Mr. Moser takes Ed back to his place to meet his family. During the visit, Ed tells the Mosers he just came from the phosphate mines up north. He also goes on to tell them he was a logger in California before that. Another story is Ed is found in a weakened state on a dirt road near Florida City, picked up by a passerby. Ed stays at the home of somebody else, regains his strength, and then meets Mr. Moser. nineteen twenty January Ed is lifted as listed as living in Reedsport, Oregon. He is head of the household with companion Clement D. Somers. Job description is described he is a laborer at the lumber mill. April second, the land Ed purchased in Oregon is sold to John E. Rowe. nineteen twenty one it appears we're missing something here. Maybe it'll pop up. 1922. January 6, Ed purchases a piece of land, the Cooley Trail from Frank W. Leonard. Ed's older brother Otto went 16 acres back in the homeland. 1923. February 27. Homestead Enterprise reports Ed purchased one acre of land from Reuben L. Moser, 209 by 210 square. February 30th, Ed withdraws his offer and cancels the deal. March 11th, 1923, Ed's mother passes away. September 22nd, 
A new subdivision is announced in the Miami Herald. This new subdivision shares land that has been settled already by Reuben Moser and Edward Leedscanlon. December 7th, Ed purchases a larger plot from Reuben for $12. This so one. February 30th, he withdraws his offer. December 7th, he purchases a larger plot. After his mother passes away, I don't know if that had any bearing on his decision. Ed continues work on his home and officially names it Ed's Place. So uh, there is a month unknown in here where Ed becomes distant and discontinues all work on the expansion of the foundation that he was building for himself and his sweet 16. He stopped all work on his home and he began building stuff around the yard. Ed finishes his wall around his acre with not much care or effort, digs his well deeper, and he starts carving furniture. First rocker was first, and then more rockers. The star bowl for water, or the porridge bowl. The Florida table, and a number of other small tables, etc. Nineteen twenty four, not long after Ed purchases land from Mr. Moser. Reuben Moser passes away. A very rare photo I found of Reuben Moser in the newspaper. You'd think there'd be a lot more pictures of him. There's a photo of Mr. Moser. 1925, Ed shows off his pine reel that he used to move the repentance corner. Here we have the repentance corner in the background, and what is called his pine reel. November 2nd of the same year, Ed's land is surveyed and recorded in the land register without his knowledge. Ed makes the twin beds and the cradle. I'm not sure where I got that from. 1928, Ed carves the star obelisk. It is said Ed broke the first two, either trying to raise them or during carving. Earl S. Lee shares this among other particular details of Ed Carvin and Raisin Obelisk in Sworn Affidavits, April 21, 1994. 1930. Ed still has not raised the obelisk. Uh, newspaper photos show a foundation for Sweet 16. Living quarters. Walls built with smaller stones are completed. Noon crescents finished. Repentance corner is not there. Sun couch is finished, right there. Stairwall, back in there. Carbon has begun on the moon fountain. Still no crescent seat for the fountain. 1932. The newspaper states, Ed is nearly finished. Also described, From the apex of these giant pillars is stretched a radio aerial, and the owner likes to joke that he gets his music from the heavens. 1934, January 16th, Ed posts a document titled, To All Concerned, 
Ed says his land was surveyed and recorded in the land register without his knowledge. Ed requests the listing be terminated and no public street, avenue, alley, or road be opened that could affect his property. Ed gets beaten sometime this year and put in the hospital, apparently. Ed reveals plans to some of his friends that he was going to enlarge Ed's place, but now he's going to cancel it due to that beating. American Weekly Incorporated writes article on Ed's place, quotes Ed saying, I do it the same way the old Egyptians built their pyramids. It's the first time I've seen that quote pop up where Ed was still alive and it was put into the newspaper. I do it the same way the old Egyptians built their pyramids. 1935. A number of newspapers run a copy-paste article poking a bit of fun at Ed for still waiting for his bride and saying she will most likely never come because every wife likes to be able to rearrange the furniture once in a while. Also state that someone should break the news to him that his bride is not coming. Sometimes I wonder if this is Ed himself. 1936. A book in every home is published by Edward Leeds Scullin. Ed also may have carved his second crescent seat for the moon fountain sometime during this year. Nineteen thirty seven, April twenty eighth. Ed pays $10 for 10 acres of land from bankrupt owner J.W. Boone. And this guy was having a lot of personal problems at the time. Uh, Ed tells Orville and Bob Biggers, others, and some others of his plans on moving. 1938. By this time, Ed should have his property cleared and his wooden home moved from Ed's place on or near the center of his new ten acres in Mr. Cantor's death. So from this property here, Ed would have moved everything down the road over to this property, over to this property here. You can see there's somewhat of an orchard there, maybe already pre-planted, and the outline of Rock Gate itself. This is during the moving of everything from here to there. 1939, Star Obelisk is moved, Crescent's moved, Moon Fountain's moved, Rockers, other pieces all transported by truck and trailer with solid rubber tires through town and to Rock Gate. Ed finishes moving everything from Florida City to Homestead same year. Ed begins carving new pieces, possibly. It appears that he may have started carving new pieces at this time toward the end of the year after other pieces were placed. It didn't take them. 1940. January 19th, Ed fills out his declaration of intention to become a naturalized citizen of the USA. Also, the year the telescope is carved and raised. Nineteen forty one, Ed's father passes away at the age of eighty nine. It also appears it's the same year that the sundial was built. Nineteen forty two, there's a video shot at Rockgate Park. 
and also January 19th, Ed Felzota's Petition for Naturalization, Petition Number 7129. At this point in time, on the sun door, it's still painted in black letters on white background. Ring bell in two minutes. Attendant will be here. Nineteen forty-three, January seventh. Nikola Tesla passes away. It also appears that Ed places the chevron crown on his complete achievement at Rock Gate, 1943. Ed shows Fred Fuchs how he did some of his achievements and acquires a number of V-magnets scrapped from Model T cars. Ed begins his in-depth experiments. 1944. There's Rockgate in 1944. May 17th, that becomes a naturalized citizen of the USA. It applies for U.S. citizenship after a visit from the FBI. Around this time also, Ed bought an expensive mattress. Sometime later, an oil lamp blows over during the day, igniting the mattress and burns most of Ed's belongings. All of experiments, notes, and as he tells friends, years of research. 1945, August. After two years of experiment and at Rock Gate, the book Magnetic Current is published. October, Mineral, Vegetable, and Animal Life is published. Nineteen forty-six. Ed pays to have an advertisement posted in the Daily Miami Daily News, February third, February twenty-fourth. Ed publishes a second advertisement in the Miami Daily News, titled, Electrons, Cosmic Force. 1946. Ed creates a Sundor diagram. He paints over his previous message. He mentions this diagram in the ad and invites researchers and scientists to come and see how it, along with the sundial and telescope, could affect science. 1946. Ed publishes Magnetic Base advertisement in the Miami Daily News, May 20th. 1947. Ed stopped selling all publications after 1946. It's unknown how many of the original books that Ed actually sold. 1948, US-1 has been extended to Key West. 1950, Harry Leeds Scotland contacts Ed by mail claiming he is kin and was a prisoner of war in Germany and was now residing in Grand Rapids, Michigan. Harry stays with Ed for a few days at Rockgate. Ed gives him $50 before he leaves. Off Harry goes. October 9th, after 35 years, Ed writes a letter to his older brother Otto including with it two photographs. One of that at the obelisk wearing his casual clothes and pointing to his name, Ed L. At this point in time, the deed was still engraved. 
The other picture is very rare as it shows Ed wearing his suit standing on a block with a white and black sign below that says, Ed himself. Letter arrives at the post office for Otto on November 15, 1951. November 9th, Ed pins a sign to his door that says, Gone to hospital. We'll be right back. He walks onto a bus and heads off to the Jackson Memorial Hospital. Later that week, Miss Laura Thorpe saw mail and papers accumulating on Ed's doorstep. Curious, she went to his door and found the note. There was no date or signature. December 7th, Ed passes away. December 12th, Ed is buried at Flagler Memorial Park in Miami. Somewhere in December, Ed's living quarters and grounds were ransacked. Anything movable, including shrubs and trees, were taken. Bicycle was still there, but the box camera was gone. His, big, his book and big dictionary also were stolen, along with his radio. $3,700 was found in Ed's radio stand later on. 1952. News reveals Ed left a will. His estate was to be divided equally among his nephews. The paper states that Ed left behind $28,500. So all sorts of people start turning up, of course. At some point in time, Harry leads Scalman wins the title The Rock Gate with the help of Roscoe Brunstetter, former mayor of Coral Gables. Nineteen fifty three, January, Harry is looking to sell Rock Gate and a number of people are interested in purchasing. Julius Levin is a successful buyer in the end. Other sources say Rock 8 was bought through the court. No decision on rightful owner was reached. 1954, newspapers are back and photo of Ed's fly low is published. It appears the main apparatus is still intact. Some components are clearly removed. Ed's bike may be missing by this time. Sometime around this year, Julius Levin began purchasing Ed's books again. Nineteen fifty five, May. No one believes a single man could achieve what Ed did without any help, so Levin asks Miss Lova if she could gather some sworn statements from the people who knew Ed and witnessed that he did all of his work alone, so in the future it could be shown officially. 1956. Harry Leedskalman passes away. 1957, the name is changed to Coral Castle. 1958, Carl Lake publishes Coral Castle book. Not sure if it was in Civil Engineering magazine. Can't find too much on Carol Lake. One article in the newspaper saying Lieutenant Colonel Carol A. Lake was now part of the Daily News staff, but I haven't been able to find many articles he has written or anything. 1964. 
and his brother Otto passes away at the age of 89. Also posted in the Kansas City Star is a possible method that Ed used to quarry his stone where it says there's some idea of his procedure he had designed a tool to which he attached a wire cable the other end of the cable was driven into the rock with an iron stake by working the tool back and forth in a sawing manner he would eventually cut several feet into the rock 1971 Ed's relatives in Latvia file for litigation over rights to Rock Gate. Nineteen seventy two Ed Shack, original living quarters, burns down. Nineteen seventy three, there is an offer made to buy Coral Castle. 1981, Julius Levin sells Rock Gate to Irene Barr. 350,000 dollars. 1983, Maria Temkin, Michael Zemney from the Florida Division of Archives submit a Register of Historic Places nomination form and lists Irene Barr, cousin of Julia Slavins, as owner of Rock Gate, Coral Castle. Rock National National Historic Place officially. May 11th, the Leeds Collins family case is dropped and they do not inherit Rock Gate. It is not known specifically why they lost the case after so long. 1985 Irene Barr is married at the Rock Gate Coral Castle. 34 years after Edward Leeds Scotland's death soon after they began fixing it up. The nine-ton gate is refitted with bearings. Ed's original ADM sign that he left back at Ed's place is brought back to Rock Gate. They begin restoring a number of things. The original spot where the ADM sign was left. 2001, a curious article appears, the Tool Newsletter. Reports that Mike Patton of the Phantomas is detained for several hours at the Miami airport for carrying an unusually large amount of cash. He later reveals to them he is on his way to purchase an old book about the Coral Castle that contained a note inside written by Edward Leedscowman. It was a book on magnetic current that Mike wanted to buy. Mike finally arrives at a arranged meeting place and the person does not show up. Their phone has also been disconnected and Mike has been able to contact this person since. 2010, the sun door gets taken down due to corrosion of the hinges. 2016, a quarry is discovered. They unveil a new quarry around 2016. They dig that out. And that's all for now. It's still incomplete.
Hope everyone has a great day. Thank you for all your time.